Hello, my fellow survivors of narcissistic abuse. Today is another video, and today's video is called When Sanity Dawns. Once, once again, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I make a video about stuff that hasn't been covered elsewhere. Um... Which just means that the stuff I think about, I'm assuming I'm thinking about it because I haven't found a video about it. <laughs> Not that I've seen them all. Let's get to the point. The first thing I want to say is that when sanity finally dawns, it's not what you think it is. Now let's get some disclaimers in here now. When sanity dawns indicates that you're the one that's insane and you're the one who's at fault in some way and that isn't the case at all. When I mean when sanity dawns, and I want to be absolutely clear about this, what I mean is I make a comparison. The nearest everybody who's normal comes to being driven crazy is when they get a really bad crush on someone, fall in love with someone, or have been in a relationship with someone where that person has had uh, more control over you than you've had over them. And when it's over and you start to put yourself back together, you feel like you've got your life back and you feel like sanity has dawned on you, you got back to who you should have been before, or who you were before. Coming out of narcissistic abuse is like the, is like the cruelest version of coming out of a dysfunctional relationship, um, re dysfunctional romantic relationship. So when I say to you when sanity dawns, I don't mean, oh, well done, you finally got it. I mean, the day comes when you glimpse that you've been tricked, lied to, but most importantly, subjugated not just in deed not just in uh, literal matters of subservience like being told to do something and doing it no the very first time that you really make a break for freedom is the first time you start thinking outside the box that was created for you by your abuser, by your parent abuser. Or conceivably, even a romantic partner who's managed to subjugate you to the point where you've completely lost track of your own autonomy. That glimpse, that first glimpse, when you get it, is very frightening, but also very thrilling. It's a momentary glance at liberty and you won't know what to do with it it's like there's a moment it's like if you'd been kept in solitary confinement for six months and then um you know with a, with a block with a blacked out window and then one day uh you woke up and the uh, blacking out on the window, some of it had just come off in the night and there was just a tiny slither of sunlight in that cell. You kind of wouldn't know what to do with it for a minute. And then, you know what? You'd probably spend all day looking at it, wondering if you dared look at it because you'd got used to being in complete darkness and complete solitary confinement. And then when you realized it wasn't going away, You'd shut your eyes and open them again and it was still there. You know what you might do? Scared it's going to be taken away again. You'd crawl over to that little slither of light. And you'd let it play on your face. 
not your eyes, because your eyes couldn't take it. But you'd feel, you'd try to feel that sunlight on your face. And you know what? You'd probably do it knowing that when the guards found out, they were going to come in and cover it up again. That's what the first moment of sanity dawning is like. And you will run away from it again. But once you've seen it, you keep going back. It's like, um, you know, having a cut on the inside of your mouth. You just can't leave it alone. But you don't dare believe it either. And what's happening at this moment is for the first time in your life... You're trying out the idea that maybe you can be in charge of your life. You're trying out the idea that maybe your life can be about you. That maybe you could take charge of small decisions because what this parental, narcissistic, abusive bully has done is they have reared you. They have reared you as an underclass in their miniature world. I know that sounds heavy handed, but you have to try this idea out. Because, it, it, you know, if you're watching this, if, you, if you're even bothered, if you haven't stopped watching this already, then take my word for it. You're in this as well. This is you. You're in this. You're in this. You're down in the pit with me. With all of us. You know, it's very unlikely. If you've been led to this, if you typed in narcissism today and you came up with this, it's very unlikely that you're not a victim of this stuff because why would you care unless it's to like unless you find me very amusing good luck because this is boring if you haven't been through it so basically what I'm saying to you is You've been, it's hard for you to believe it because you're thinking, no, 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 that's my mum, that's my dad. What they've always, etc., etc. They've always known what's best. They've always been there for me. They would be so hurt if they knew. that you've got to understand something really important, right? There's been a, there's been a lot of talk about narcissism and evil and is it evil? Are narcissists evil, right? You know what we're going to do with this? What we're going to find out is we're going to find out a bit like the world used to be flat and a bit like the sun used to go around the earth. Well, I think we're all going to find out that evil isn't what we thought it was, at least as far as human beings are concerned. Which, believe me, annoys me, because I would rather people were... I'd rather that I could accuse someone of being evil, right? Uh, generally. I would rather abuse... I would rather believe that. I'd like to live in a black and world... A black and white, non-relativistic, moral universe where I can just point at someone and judge them. Like, like I, I... You know, full of righteous moral indignation and be like, you know, you are evil. You are wrong. You are going down. I would like to be that man. That's my... My narcissism coming out. I'm not saying there isn't evil in the universe. There might be. I don't know. But I'm I am I I am now beginning to suspect that a lot of the things that we think are evil are just narcissism. Right? And 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 here's what I think about that. Whether or not evil people really exist, I would have to think very hard now. Now I know about narcissism, about whether or not evil is really relevant anymore. Okay? Because I think narcissism can cover it. Um, if there's narcissism and even worse stuff 
even you know evil beyond that i'll call that evil right right I'll, we'll look into that we'll, we'll talk about that another day but let's let me explain what i why i think narcissism is going to turn out to be the um that you know the root of all what we used to call evil <coughs> You got to understand something about your narcissistic abuser, right? They really think they know what's best. They really think they're doing the right thing. And if they didn't think they were doing the right thing, it wouldn't matter anyway because they're so self-important. And believe me, we all have an element of this ourselves. I have it. All of us victims have an element of this self-importance in ourselves because we've been corrupted by a narcissist, but we have been suppressed and repressed. These narcissists have the same urge, but somehow they've managed to run free with it. Maybe they only started running free with it when we came along, when we were born or whatever, but they, They've been allowed to exercise their egotistical um, fantasies, right, without regard with, for consequence, boundaryless, and they, and they exercise uh, challenging and crossing boundaries all the time, if you notice. The narcissist will walk into your room without knocking. The narcissist will turn up at your house when you've left, moved home years later. Um, the narcissist will behave actually very inappropriately because they believe they have a right. They, you've got to look at medieval kings to understand how the narcissist sees themselves. And if you don't believe me, just ask yourself this question. If you could do it, wouldn't you do it too? I mean, I'm not saying you'd be cruel. I'm not saying you'd be evil. Oh, no, we would be good kings, wouldn't we? We would be just, wouldn't we? But we would do good things with all that power. That desire, that hunger, that kind of... Um, I'm not particularly biblical, but I'm interested in the Bible. What the Bible would call the Jezebel spirit, this hubris in the face of God... What <coughs> every human being would like to exercise that and every victim of narcissism in their moment of rage when you're angry and I bet I, I really believe you, you are right when you and you're going to get more angry when you start to come out of this who wouldn't who wouldn't let their word be law who wouldn't demand that people listen to them and take their thoughts and their feelings seriously, have to take them seriously? Well, the narcissist, the narcissistic parent, right, they created a miniature world where they were king or queen. And you were their subjects, just you. And to make sure that you, or even court jester, or slave, or prisoner, you got to really get into this because it's it's um, and, and to make sure it worked, they had a golden child as a sort of sergeant at arms or lieutenant. Right. To keep you there because they know they're going to need they know to keep you in that painted into that tiny corner. They can't do it on their own. They've got to keep that. They've got to. They've got to array everything against you and understand something else. This isn't conscious. They don't think it through. It's instinctive. It's a sickness. It's a human characteristic that gets away. That gets away. It's like if jealousy ran off and became its own personality disorder all on its own you know or if um covetousness or uh, or um or greed if they kind of ran off and became their own thing like almost like independent ways of being human you know that's what this is like it's got out of hand it's got out of control this narcissist 
wanted so badly to repair, fix, address the issue of their lack of uh, uh, self-worth that they somehow took this path. They One day they just opened the door and started being a prick. And you know what? They got away with it. Or if they didn't get away with it, they didn't learn the lesson and they kept hunting around until they found a door that they could kick open with it and it worked. And maybe that was, you know, your mother or your father, or maybe it was when you were born, the first time they kicked you around. Or maybe it started at school. Maybe it started when they were two. I don't know. But that's what happened. And it, and it, and it worked and it fed them, right? And they started thinking, this is how it's going to be now. This is how it's going to be from now on. No more, no more left turns. It's all right turns now. That's a Chris Rock joke. I don't know why I've thrown that in there. Okay. Um, that's a reference to a Chris Rock joke anyway. It wasn't very funny when I did it. So what you've got to realise, when sanity dawns, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to challenge it yourself. That's how you know you're a victim, by the way. Because anybody watching this who thinks they can just accuse their parents of being narcissists because they're not doing what they want, watch yourself, because that's just crazy, all right? People that have genuine narcissistic abuse issues are in terrible suffering and part of the suffering is the constant self-analysis, the constant self-challenging, the constant not being able to believe it. So if this is going down too smoothly, check yourself, you know. At the end of the day, there are lots of other videos out there about how to make sure, you know, your 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 abuser is a narcissist or your parent or your ex. But to be honest, I don't think you'd have got through any of this without being genuinely interested. <coughs> but um it's very simple. You can tell a narcissist by, you know, three or four very simple keys. And there, there are other videos dealing with that. But really simply, um, very simply, a narcissist just doesn't really care about you. They don't care. They, they, what they, you know, when you're in a transaction with an, everything's a transaction with a narcissist. You know, when you're in a transaction with a narcissist, because at the end of the transaction, you're shorted. It might be emotionally, it might be financially, it could be a friend that, you know, keeps borrowing money off you. It could, but usually it's um, in terms of status. They usually short you status-wise. The conversation may have started well, but it's very unlikely you will get through one transaction with your narcissist without them taking something from you. And you'll feel it. And you're, and you're probably used to it. You probably even notice it uh, for a long time. But you're, but by the time, but the fact that you, you're searching out information on us means that you, you're looking for answers. You got very, you, and you should be very tired of it. You probably think, you know, you probably think you're supposed to put up with it. You probably think, oh yeah, yeah, they do that, but I should be a man about it. I should be a grown up about it. I should be a grown woman about it. But it's wrong. It, I'm, it's, it's, imagine doing it to somebody else. Imagine doing it to me. Imagine, you've watched this video, right? And you can see where I'm coming from. You can do it right now, right? As soon as the video is over, you can write in the box underneath and you can be a prick. You can say, didn't like your video too much. You, you went on too much long. You kept changing the subject. Uh, the lighting was terrible. I do that deliberately, by the way. There's reasons for that. Um, and I don't like your face or your voice. You can do that. Do it. See if it makes you feel good. Because I really, I don't, really don't care. Right? Try it out. Try it out to see if it makes you feel better. Right? But listen to me. I don't think that's the sort of person you are. I don't think you, I think, even, I think you might even try and make yourself do it to see if you can. And that'll make you feel sick. If you're a narcissist victim. Let's use that as the test. Let's use Ehan's videos as a litmus test for whether or not people are narcissists. Try typing all that stuff I just said. You, you, your video is shit. You are 
uh, boring and you go off the point too much and the lighting's terrible. See if you can get to the end of that. If you can get to the end of that without feeling sick, you know, you're all right. You're, you're, you're not a narcissist or a victim of narcissism. You can go. If you can't get to the end of it, it's all right. It's like the, we, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll uh, drown a witch. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm silly. <clears throat> right, back on track. Sanity dawns. You know, you got to understand something. Evil or not evil. It's irrelevant. The question doesn't apply. I wish it did. I wish I could... I would love to get the narcissist that abused me and shame them for what they've done to me and prove to them, and this is all bullshit. It, there's no Judge Judy going to come down from the sky and give my dad uh, his ass, handed, hand his ass to him. It's not happening. Not in this lifetime. Maybe, maybe there's something after this. It's not happening. Because you know what's really extraordinary about getting over this stuff? Is it's not about them or what they did to you. It's about you. It start, that's the whole point. It starts being about you. The first glimmer of hope. It starts being about you. At last! At last! And you know what? It's gonna, you're, and you're going to feel like you're being selfish. You're going to feel you're being selfish. The first step you take, the first time, you, you, you're, you're going to feel selfish for lapping up that little slither of sun in the cell. Because that's how you've been reared. That's how you've been made. And I want to tell you, these people that have done this to you, they are very frightened people, all right? They are weak. They are, they are actually very cowardly, despite no matter how much they try and make out otherwise. And they are very fearful, right? And the reason they're... F wouldn't you be fearful if you were them? Because... I had a really bad time at school, right? Really horrible. And the reason I had a hard time at school is because I was brought up to put up with a lot of bad behaviour by my parental abuser. And I became just a doormat and a target. And on top of that, I coped with everything that was thrown at me by becoming very precocious. I was, I was, a, I was clever, but I, I was dyslexic. So I didn't, I didn't do well. I wasn't academic, but I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, I can't think of the word, but it's, uh, I was sharp, but I wasn't academic. So I had a hard time because that, that's, that's, that's a bad combination. It means that you're, you know, it means that you're um, bright and it means that you're a little bit, it means you, it, it turns a bit of a precocious git because, you know, you're not in the right stream. You're not with your peers, right? Really intellectually because you're not academic. <coughs> And please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the kids kids I was with were mean because uh, they were dumb. I, I I actually found that the kids who were in the lower streams were nicer. Um, it wasn't that. It was the kids in the middle stream. I, I I elevated through school and I ended up in the middle stream because because this 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 disparity between me being bright and not academic got noticed. And they tried to push me up, and uh, in the end, I was in the middle, and that was the worst stream, the middle stream. You know, the kind of middle class kids and the middle um, uh, middle achievement kids, and they were nasty, right? And I got I got a really hard time. Um. I've forgotten why I went down this road. Give me a second. Um, school bullying, and I it was it, it it wasn't sexual or overtly physical. It was psychological, and it was there was a lot of stuff that wasn't very nice, and it, and it was um, it was too much. It, it got out of hand, I think. Uh, considering it was only psychological, it got pretty bad. But I, I spoke to someone years later, and um, a long time later, and I confessed this to him, that I'd had this horrible time at school and terrible things. Things that happened outside school. It wasn't just kept in... That's what I thought was really bad. It wasn't kept inside school. Things happened, you know, outside school. There was a kind of terrorism kind of uh, scenario occurred. So, look... <coughs> 
years later I spoke to a, I was friends with this guy who was quite a bit of a hard case actually and I told him the story and he said something really interesting I've never forgotten he said um yeah I wasn't very nice at school you're probably the kind of kid that I wouldn't have been very nice to at school I and mean, we got we got on we got on very well but he was very frank with me but he said something to you got to understand something he said I've got to live with that the rest of my life because I was doing that to a um what I did I was doing to um uh, you know, vulnerable, young children who could have become anything now. And he said, I'm telling you now, you spend the rest of your life, you spend the rest of your life looking over your shoulder. I looked at him, I thought, is that right? And he was like, because you have no idea who the people you victimise, you've no idea what they've become. And you know, and I think what he was saying was, and I think he may have said this, because and you, and worst thing is, you know, whatever you get, whatever happens, you deserve it. You deserve it. In a way, you've got it coming. It's just a matter of time. And listen, that's what your narcissistic abuser knows, and they've known it for a long time. And by the time you get sort of into your thirties. They know it's not just common. It's overdue. They know it's overdue. And from that bit on, I think, they start to get really cagey and really start to worry. I should probably wind this up because it's long. I've done a long one. I've done almost half an hour or something. It's... I've tried today to address the issue of when sanity dawns and how how it feels. I think I've done all right, you know. I think I got I got the idea out I wanted to. Um because it's a, this is a long process and I would really love it if my videos were little stepping stones, like little um because I think I think that that does need a whole video. Just that first glimpse, the first glimpse of sun through the you know through the blacked out window, through the partially the partial. That does deserve a whole video because it will be, it'll be the first step of your recovery and the first day of the rest of your life. Truly, like people use that phrase a lot now. I mean, really, really, it's more true for you, more true for the victims of narcissism than, than the other people. All right, I think I should stop because I feel I'm flailing. Um, if you found this useful, I'm grateful, truly. And um, I, I hope, I hope your journey as healthy as it can be and as gentle as it can be and and the first time that parental abuser or anybody else who was picked up on the fact that you've been abused instinctively and tries to take advantage of you the first time somebody crosses you after you've seen this or after you've started to get your personal glimpse <coughs> right do something to do something about it. I mean, you even if you just put your hand up while they're talking, right? Or even if you just turn away from them. Or if it's on the phone, put the phone down. You know? And if it's a situation you can't get out of, just say, I really don't like being spoken to like that. It's legitimate. It's fine. You're allowed. You're allowed to say that. I really don't like being spoken to like that. And have a good look at them when you say it. And if they turn on you some more, then maybe you walk away. If you're at work, maybe you should leave. Just go. Because believe me, when someone crosses you, they know they're crossing you, man. And if you don't believe me, do that exercise I just said about writing something horrible to me under this video. Because you won't get through one... You won't get to your first bit of punctuation, right? Without knowing what you're doing. All right, I'm going to go. 
if you uh, if you've seen this early in your day and you've got the day ahead of you, I wish you uh, all strength and all all vision, yeah? all insight. And if it's the end of your day, then I wish you a good night's sleep and healthy recuperative dreams. Goodbye.